everyone. Uh, glad to see you all this morning. Um, so at a retreat, uh, what's very uh, what we do at a retreat is we look at the Bible uh, very intensively. Um, so um, this time uh, we're going to do three Bible studies, and we're going to do three Bible studies on Abraham is what we're doing. So Abraham is a very, very important figure inside of the Bible. Uh, we call him the father of faith. And there are many stories of Abraham. Um, you know, really, if you really want to look at Abraham beyond, you know, we only have time for three Bible studies. But if you really want to look at the whole of Abraham on your own, you could read basically from Genesis 11 up until 25. And it's all the stories of Abraham. Uh, but we're only going to just look at three portions of uh, the life of Abraham um, in three Bible studies. Um, but, uh, you know, I think these three are very important for us and our faith. And I hope that uh, we can gain uh, a lot of strength and uh, a great message really for us in faith. So uh, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 12. Uh, if you can open up your Bibles to Genesis 12. Uh, from verse just one through three. Uh, we're going to look at just three verses for the first Bible study. Uh, Genesis chapter 12. From verse one through three. It says, uh, The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. Amen. So um, here in verse one, God says, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. Leave your country, people and household. So uh, first thing we need to know a little bit about is Abraham's background, where he came from. So Abraham came from a household of an idol seller, actually. That's what his father basically did. He took idols, made idols, and he sold them. And this, he was this kind of family. And, um, you know, as you probably already know from the Bible, um, or, you know, almost anyone knows really, uh, even outside uh, of the Bible, that God hates idol worshipers. I mean, God is God. You know, uh, idol worshipers is something really um, that, you know, uh, we, we should not worship idols. God hates idol worshipers. God is in heaven. How can you worship something that man creates? If God is in heaven, and then here is the little idol that, that man created, how can you worship that as God? And so really God hates idol worshipers. You know, what really idol worshiping is, is a, a twisting, right? It is a self-glorifying, right? So, you know, I created this and I'm glorifying that in which I created. And so it's really a twisting and self-glorifying uh, way of myself, really. And so, uh, you know, God hates people who worship idol worshiper, you know, idol worshipers. God hates people who worship the idols. So how much worse, right, when you think about it, is it for someone who actually sells the idols? Right? So this was the family that Abraham uh, came from, you know, causing other people to sin. You know, it's, more, it's one thing if you're going to worship idols and you're sinning. But then the person who sells the idols causing other people to sin. So uh, one thing we come to see is, is that Abraham came from this kind of household. But still, God chose him anyways. Right? He took him from the worst of worst households, but he chose him anyways. He gave him this great blessing that we read today. He became the father of faith. So when you really think about that, you know, how really great is that? Right? I mean, this is amazing hope when you come to think about it. You know, for us too, we need to think about it when it comes to God's blessing in our life. You know, as I look at the Zoom right now, I, I think that, you know, most of us are still fairly young. I mean, there is still a lot ahead of us. There's still a lot of blessing that God wishes to give us in our life. 
So we need to remember that we, God's blessing, God's promise that he gives us is not dependent on our past. Uh, whether we come from a bad family situation or a low social status or any kind of situation, any kind of thing that we have had in the past, now God's blessing is not dependent on you know, any kind of past thing, my background or those kinds of things. You know, we need to really come to see even a person like Abraham really became a great person of God. And those things, you know, that background he had, that really bad background he had in the family of idol worshipers, that did not determine his destiny. Right? Everything of his background did not determine his destiny. We see that Abraham's faith overcame all of those boundaries and that blood lineage that blood lineage and that family that he had. He didn't become what basically everyone expected him to do. So all of these people probably, you know, around him, you know, Abraham's father, maybe extended family, whatever it was, you know, expected him probably to continue the family business. I mean, that's pretty important, right? When you think about it, you know, him in that situation with his father and this family business of making idols, that's what every there there's something that everyone expected him to do uh, which was probably to continue that family business sell idols but how how did abraham think you know when you look at abraham and how he was and when you look at his walk of faith starting really from this blessing and this calling from god you know i shouldn't be stuck in those kinds of things in the tradition of idol sellers Really, he's refusing his background. He's refusing the way of the world, right? That background and that way of the world that he was in, right? He is saying, really, um, really, actually, when you look at, if you look at really the lineage of Abraham, there's something deeper in the lineage of Abraham. Uh, you know, before him was, was Terah, his father, that idol seller, but he was actually from a very righteous family. He was the 10th descendant that came after Noah. And he came from, from, a, from a very righteous lineage of Noah. So, you know, we have to really keep our purity. In order to be a great person of faith, right, we have to come and we have to have our hearts be, have that kind of desire to, to be cleansed of all that past, all the things of the world. I shouldn't be the one that is washed in the world just like everyone else around me. I shouldn't just be, you know, just washed in, in the sinfulness and the evilness of the world. But I should be really a person of faith. And really, we can see this inside of Abraham. Furthermore, what was also inside of Abraham? He lived for a new hope, right? A new hope, a new desire. I want to live something much more, much more powerful, much more. I want to live a much more spiritual life than my background came from. In essence, you know, he had something inside of him. You know, despite the fact that his family was a family of idol sellers, it was a, a really, uh, you know, farthest away from God. He had the heart to bear his family's sins, right? Bear all the, bear all that, bear all, you know, how his family had strayed off into this family of idol sellers. He wanted to bear, bear all that and then rewrite and write a new history, you know, for his family, right? For himself and for a new thing, a new way of God. You know, for him, it's not that I'm just going to be stuck in my, my horizontal, Right? There is just, you know, the things around me and the horizontal way of life, worshiping and selling idols here on earth. You know, rather than just living horizontally uh, for what is around me, you know, I need to live vertically, right? I need to live vertically for God and I need to receive grace from God. And right? I really need to live for that. And so... Really, we need to turn our eyes in that way. Uh, when I live for the vertical life, when I live for the vertical life, when I really receive grace from God, then God will really want to pour down amazing blessing upon us, right? 
not just stuck in, in, in what is around me, but receiving much, much more power from above, receiving the vertical grace from above. For us, we need, to, we need to know that no matter where we are, we can receive that vertical grace. You know, we, we could be in, we could, you know, we could be in a difficult situation, right? We could be in like a situation like, like, the, like uh, Abraham, who was in that family of idol sellers. But for him, it became an opportunity to completely flip it around. You know, when you look at the heart of the gospel, the gospel is the same way. That is the cross and the resurrection. You know, the cross and the resurrection is the complete flip around of the situation. And so, uh, you know, the world can be this way. The world can be full of evil and sin. The world can be the way it is. Everyone around me, um, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, it could be my family, like, like, like Abraham, it could be my friends, it could be just everyone I'm around, um, every, all the influences I have around me, especially these days. You know, when you look at uh, the world today and social media and all these things, you look on the internet, there's so much, so much garbage, so much trash really in the world, and there's so much evilness around us. But how precious is the one that really wants to stand up righteously before God? Abraham had this kind of heart, despite all the influence, all the influence. I mean, I tend to, all of us really tend to just be enveloped in the things around us. How precious is the one is not being enveloped in the horizontal things around us, but having the heart to really receive from above desire righteousness, desire that comfort from God. Now we need to know and we need to have faith. God is great, right? God is great despite everything around us in the world, fighting us in, in the world. He can work, right? He can work even in that. You know, God is in heaven and we are on earth. And so God is much, much more powerful, much, much greater than even anything inside of this world. God can work in the ones who have an open heart. God can work in the ones who have faith. Despite all the enemies, everything around us, it's just, it's just me here standing in this place. Right? The ones with a righteous heart, the ones with faith. Now, actually, in that case, how much happier is God for the one who turns away from the idol seller and then turns to God in that situation? You know, God is really, really happy. You know, God really wants to bless that kind of person. You know, isn't God the one waiting for that kind of person? You know, God is, you know, we need to know God is great, right? God is great. You know, in fact, God, he, uh, you know, we learn in the Bible that God created the whole universe. He created the whole universe and then he created all of us. So, you know, what we learn in the Bible is that God can do anything. God is almighty and God is powerful. But even the almighty, powerful God, he is the God of love. And so the God of love wants us to freely, in our hearts, turn to him in love and in faith. You know, that's what faith is. Faith is really opening up my heart and desiring, really, God's work inside of my life. It's that really that heart to really open up and really receive him in that way. You know, I mean, I mean, look at Abraham. Was there really any qualification he had, any family background, any status? There was nothing like that. There was nothing innate inside of Abraham that was so great. There was no ability, you know, it's, it's, it's not like he was some kind of like genius or, or something like this. You know, what we see about, you know, if there was any special quality about Abraham, there was only one thing, and that was faith. And that was the faith really to open up his heart. You know, he opened up his heart and, had, and, and, and having that, that desire really to receive, you know, receive God's history in him. You know, that's all. That's really all that was in Abraham. It was that open heart to really, really receive. And uh, I think uh, coming to, you know, a retreat like this, that's what it is as well also. You know, uh, when we come to retreat, that's what we do. We come to retreat and it's just being in that place, you know, to receive. You know, whether it be like right now as we're, you know, listening to the word and looking at the Bible like this, or even as we're praising or praying, right, or breaking bread and having fellowship. 
man. What is faith? It is, you know, just really being in that place, in that place right now where I am, the Holy Spirit works. I open up my heart and the Holy Spirit works. And I open up my heart and I desire God's grace in me, God's blessing. Mm -hmm. And for, for Abraham, right, this is what he had. He had an open heart desiring this huge blessing from God, a new history, right? A new history to be rewritten through him. So Abraham, he had that in him. There was nothing at all he could boast about. And it's the same for us too. Right? The same situation of Abraham is the same situation of us. We also, just like Abraham, have nothing to boast about. No background, nothing. Let's go to Romans chapter 3 in verse 10. And I know a lot of you study Romans um, with me. So we'll look at Romans chapter 3 in verse 10. It says, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Right? There's no one righteous, not even one. So there's no one righteous, Abraham or us. If you skip down a little bit in Romans 3, verse 27 and 28. Verse 27 and 28. Where is the boasting? It is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So the works of the law, the works of, of, of being good. The law teaches us what is good and what is evil of being good. So it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's not even any works of the law. You know, really, the only thing, the core of Christianity is that faith. And then uh, Apostle Paul, right in Romans 4, verse 1 and 3, he really talks about Abraham immediately. So let's look at Romans 4 in verse 1 through 3. It says, what then shall we say? Or father, forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter. In, in fact, Abraham was justified by works. He had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. So he believed, he had faith. And the faith was credited to Abraham as righteousness. So what we come to see inside of the core of Abraham is that there's nothing else. That's what faith is, you know, to really receive the amazing power of God vertically from him. There is nothing else, right? The only thing is the heart, an open heart, right? My heart opening. And did I really do any work to open my heart. You know, is someone so great and so powerful because they open their heart. No, you know, it's not like that. We just, we just open it, right? We just got to open our heart and that's it. Right. And so that's, that's deep grace. You know, this is the deep grace. I have no qualification at all, no position, no background, whatever it is. You know, faith is just opening up my heart to receive the blessing of God. And that's what we see that Abraham had in him. In the early church, too, as well, too. It's not like they were like great people that started, you know, the church, right? I mean, think about it. Jesus died on the cross uh, he resurrected and ascended to heaven. And so really there was the early church. There was the apostles that really started the early church. But, you know, we look at them and, uh, you know, <laughs> they, were they people of huge, great background that, you know, really with their intelligence and then their systematic ability to like structure a church and, you know, the powerful eloquence and all these kinds of things was able to, you know, do all this. It wasn't like that. <laughs> You know, they, they, these people were fishermen. That's what's recorded in the Bible, right? <laughs> you know, think about it, right? They went in, they fished in the water, and they did that every single day. <laughs> and then Jesus suddenly called them. And then for three years, they were with Jesus. And then, you know, these people, like, okay, these people with like somehow like converted into some great administrative power to build some huge structure of like a church and then eloquently with some great knowledge, like started the church. You know? It wasn't anything like that, you know. It's just the power of God. You know, that's what we say when we say the power of God. Oh, he even works through like pe people who like just took the fish every day. Like he took them and built the church of God. And then you know, I mean, I really don't have time to read all this, but like really, like Peter. Peter was a fisherman, and then you know, like like the Holy Spirit came down on him in Acts and then 3000 immediately, he, he like preached the gospel. He just like preached Jesus. 
and then suddenly three thousand people, you know, came to faith on that just on that one day, like just like that. You know, I mean, this fisherman. And so, really, how great is God? We need to know God's greatness in that way. Now, I want to look at uh, one last verse for this part. Let's look at First Corinthians, uh, chapter one, in verse twenty-six through twenty-nine. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 29. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world, the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. I hope really we can know this great faith, have an open heart like Abraham and be in this way as well also. So that's verse one. And let's look at verse two. Uh, I'll make you into a great nation. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Going back to Genesis 12 in verse two. Uh, it says, I'll make you into a great nation and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. So we heard about Abraham's background, um, but we also see God called him right, to, to you know, be a new nation. I'll make you into a great nation. So you know, leave, leave your background, leave all of that, your family, your, your country, your people, your father's household, and then go and be a great nation. So when you look at that, right, I mean, you know, this is a very hard thing to do. Right? This is a very hard thing really to do. Uh, to leave everything and open up a new world. But God record, but the Bible records Abraham had this kind of faith. So if you look in Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 8, it sort of reinforces this. Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 8. Hebrews 11 in verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even those he did not know where he was going. So, you know, going where you really don't know where you're going. So we come to see the challenge that God always gives us is something like this. Right? The challenge that God, God gives us is always something like this. It's not something necessarily easy to follow. Right? Faith is not necessarily that, you know, I know with certainty. Abraham didn't know. Right? I mean, here the blessing came to him. I'll make you into a great nation. I mean, it's fairly, you know, fairly short, but very graceful, but fairly short. Right? But it's not like God told him, you know, this is exactly how I'm going to make you into a great nation. You know, follow these steps. You know, here's the manual. <laughs> like, here's the manual in order for how, you know, I'm going to do this. Right? And so, you know, he didn't really know, right? And so faith, faith is something like this. I don't really know. I just have, the, have this great promise, this great future. I know that God is going to bless me, but I don't really necessarily know, right? And so really, when you come to see what faith is, faith is really just, like I said, just that open heart, right? It's an open heart. But it's not necessarily a certainty in the mind, Right? So we need to come to see that. So it's an open heart to really receive from God, but it's not necessarily a certainty that I know exactly how it's going to go in my mind. I know, I know, I know the way. Like we're so, you know, we, like we, we know what's going to exactly happen. Faith really is just receiving from God with our heart and then following, obeying with him in that way. You know, following, even though, you know, I don't necessarily know what, what's going to happen, right? And, you know, it might be difficult even what I'm going to do and how I'm going to follow. Right? There were those three things that God told them to leave behind. Your country, your people, and your father's household. I mean, this is very hard. I mean, our country, where we're from. What does that mean when it means our country? Yeah, I mean, there's the country around us, like literally like country, but also... You know, what this is really talking about is where we are from, our background, our people, right? You know, where we are from, our background, and then the people, right? Leave your people. This is our bloodline and our father's household, right? I mean, father's household, you can think of like family, but also I think even in Abraham's case, it probably means his father's household as in the destination of his life, 
right? His family business, the destination of his life, where, you know, everyone's expecting you to go, right? So there is like my country, sort of my worldview background, my ideology, where I came from. There is my people. There is sort of the, the people around me, the, my bloodline, those kinds of things. And then there is the destination. So my past, my present, and my future, right? We seemingly you know, growing up and, and coming into this world, we have these kinds of things set, right, in us, in this world, right? So many of us put these things as first and foremost in my life. They are what I know. They are what I am comfortable with, right? Those things that I have, my, 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 my past worldview, my present and my future, right? All these things like sort of, you know, give me this comfortable stability in my life. Right? I want to stay where I am, where I'm living, right? Where, you know, where, where uh, people are, you know, where I'm comfortable with, you know, and, and we all have that, right? We have uh, the people that influence me, my family and friends that influence me around me, and I'm comfortable with them. And then my family business too. It's like, oh, like, like the, the place, the destination, like, oh, you know, um, where, 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 I, where I'm expected to really, really go. So all of these things, when you really look, have a very strong, powerful influence on people, right? And most people, they are dictated by these things. We're dictated by this sort of like comfortable boundary that we, that we are in. And so people have that, right? You know, this is where I should go. You know, I, sh I should need to do this, like this college, this job, this, you know, so on and so forth. I mean, you know, there are these things where it, it's comfortable and I should go. And all of these things have very strong influence on us. And we are people that are dictated by these kind of boundaries in our life. But Abraham didn't let his life be dependent on that fate. He didn't let his, he didn't let his life be dependent on those boundaries that he was in, right? That he was, that, that he was in. I think about that kind of life, right? I mean, so many of us really live that kind of life, like dictated by these boundaries that I'm in. But he overcame that. And that's really how he was able to become a great person. You know, think about it. How can you become a very, very great person? How can God really make us into a great, a very special person for him, for his glory and for his kingdom? You know, if I am stuck in these comfortable boundaries of life, right? If I'm stuck in these comfortable boundaries in life, then probably, you know, I'm going to take the road and, and it's going to be that, that same thing. And there's so many, so many people taking that path. And there's so many people taking that path. You can really see this out, you know, here really in this country even. You know, so many people are self-empowered self and very comfortable, right? It is, you know, it is somewhat comfortable, right? In a sort of a worldly definition, it is comfortable. But at the same time, the same self-empowered, comfortable country that we are in, so many people still feel a, an emptiness and a lacking on the inside, right? Really, truly not connected with God. And so, you know, God, God cannot work, right? God cannot work if we are just staying within these comfortable boundaries that we're in. You know, the heart, the heart to open up beyond, and accept and receive something beyond that, right? That is, the, you know, having the heart, you know, the really, that's the first and most important thing. That's the critical, that, that's everything, having faith, having that open heart to receive something greater. Mm -hmm. um, actually, when you come to see it another way, uh, you know, those things that are holding us back, those things that, that become our boundaries, uh, they're actually an, an opportunity, actually, for us. They're a chance to open up our heart and overcome those boundaries. That's what a great person does. A great person really takes those boundaries, those comfortable boundaries that we are in, and uses them as an opportunity to really overcome them. If you look... Uh, uh, All right, uh, if you look at uh, Revelations chapter 2 and verse uh, 17, 
Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, very metaphorically, it talks about this great glory of God. It says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give them some hidden manna. Right? This, you know, in the heart, right? The hidden manna. I will give the person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who really receives it. And so really receiving that great faith, receiving that great grace, you know, there is a glory that God wishes to really give to us. You know, if it was given out recklessly, then the reward wouldn't be precious. You know, difficulties, right? difficulties and challenges is what makes the reward a truly a great reward. You know, we shouldn't be confined in our fate here on earth, but live for a greater future that God has for us. In this way, I can truly become a great person. God blesses us amazingly with grace beyond our imagination. You know, shouldn't a faith, uh, an ancestor of faith really be, be like this? I think that's re really God wants in a great person, in an ancestor of faith, to be a great nation like this, to be a really great person like this. He wants a person with a very great heart. <laughs> we need a big heart. You know, I mean, faith is having an open heart. And so in that way, we really, really need to have a big heart like that. You know, this is how, this is a person God can work through, a person really with a big heart. So in the Bible, Abraham really was the first one to cut himself off of, of everything, of all these things, and then really have a big open heart to receive what is greater from God. Right? So, you know, what really is greater? Before Abraham's life, entire life would have just been stuck in his country and his people and his father's household. But now God's nation is before him. He became an ancestor of faith. There's no comparison, right? Before it was just like this sort of way in this boundary of this father, you know, the people, father and, and household and, and whatnot, this, this, this destiny of this idol seller and that, and that kind of life. But then this amazing blessing of what we know him as now, Right? Everyone knows the name of Abraham now, really. You know, even people who don't know the Bible still know this name. And so Abraham, there's no comparison in terms of what, what ended up happening. He became the, the ancestor of faith. There's no comparison when it comes to this great blessing. Mm -hmm. It shows just how much we, you know, for us living in our life, we can just be stuck with blinders in our own worldview but our eyes need to be bigger. In this respect, Abraham's eyes were the same as Jesus. If you look at uh, Mark chapter 3, in verse 31 through 35, Mark chapter 3, in verse 31 through 35, then Jesus's mothers and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked and those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will, whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Mm -hmm. And so even for, for Jesus, he, you know, who is the Lord's family? My family is not my physical family, but my spiritual family. So he's trying to say there's a bigger family. There is a wider worldview. Right? More than just the blinders I have, you know, living in my, my people, my household, and, 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 and all those types of things. It's this wider worldview of the bigger Lord's family, spiritual family. If you look at Luke chapter 9, this is what Jesus told his disciples to. So this is Luke chapter 9, verse 59 through 60. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 through 60. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, first, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So you know, Jesus seems a little bit harsh here, right? Oh, let the dead, let me go bury my father, but let the dead bury their own dead. But, you know, more than sort of a literal sense here, 
you know, what is, what is the Lord, what is Jesus trying to say? He is trying to say we need to overcome the dead history of life, you know, a dead history of the world and receive the history of life from God. Really to receive from God, I must empty out. So uh, really, I wish we can be the ones to let go. Right? Let go. What is it that we were holding on to? What is this boundary line that I was really holding on to in my life? I wish we can be the ones not confined, not confined in ourselves with, with blinders on, but have a big open heart. You know, God works through the one like Abraham who has a big heart. Uh, what are we holding on to? I wish we won't be confined in that, but instead, like Abraham, you know, how can we accept and have a bigger heart? We, we need to let go. Right? That's the only way we can receive something greater. Right? If, we're, if we're holding on to like, like something, you know, how can we really receive something greater? Right? I mean, the, you know, I think I told this in sermon a, a couple few weeks ago, like the monkey, you know, the monkey take, goes into the jar and he, he holds the, the banana. The banana is, is too big, so it can't get out of the jar. And that's when the hunter comes and kills him, right? We're holding on to something, you know, just let go of that. And then there's life and there's the world before me, right? So let's not be confined in, in what we are holding on to, but taste, you know, really taste a, a greater world of God. I wish we could be these ones. So let's go to the final verse uh, for this Bible study. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 3. Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 3. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So finally, what do we see here? All people will be blessed through you. So Abraham becomes the source, right? The source of blessing, right? God's promise came to him. Right, saying you will be the source of blessing. All blessings will come through you. And those who curse you will also be cursed. We see here that the ones who follow in faith and obey God's calling, they become the source of blessing. Now, why is it? It is because God, you know, actually God is the source of all blessings. God is the source of everything that is good, that is true and righteous. Anything good, true, and righteous in this world comes from God. God is the source for all of that. But therefore, because God is the source for all of that, therefore, everyone and anyone who has an open heart to God, anyone who has faith, that's what faith is, right? Faith is really having an open heart to God. Anyone who has faith also becomes that source of blessing because God is the source of blessing for all of that. Mm -hmm. And likewise, you know, anyone who curses you, I will curse. What does that mean? I mean, if we have that open heart, if we're a people of faith and we have an open heart towards God being that source of blessing, anyone that tries to curse God, anyone that is deviating from God's truth, God's love, they will obviously also be cursed as well too you know there is god's truth god's love right the god's goodness anything deviating from that right we must be really within god's truth and god's love this is where eternity and grace the amazing grace of god is anyone that tries to really twist off of that this will, will obviously be cursed and so the ones with an open heart really standing before god and really receiving that amazing blessing with god we become, right, that source of blessing on earth. So God, God really truly wishes to find ancestors of faith like Abraham to pour down those blessings upon us. Therefore, uh, the ones called by God must never lose this sense, never lose that sense of identity, never lose that sense of position that we are in. Like Abraham, when we have faith, we are these precious ones. God is always, always holding on to me in my life. Right? This is this what we're reading here. This really is the beginning of Abraham's story. And right? I'm sure that, you know, the many, many things, if you really read Genesis up until verse 20, uh, Genesis chapter 25 or so, a lot of, lot, lot of paths, a lot of difficulties. And, and we're going to look at some of that later. 
But he always held on to this great promise here at the, bless, at the beginning. Uh, even through difficulties and hardships, he never lost the self-awareness. I, I am that person, the one who has opened up their heart, and I am the origin, the blessing, the ancestor. It's the same with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How much hardship did Jesus face right, throughout his life and ministry? His own people rejected him. The own, his own disciples, who he raised. He raised his disciples preciously for those three years, but they, um, his, you know, one of the disciples betrayed him, the others abandoned him. Right? The others abandoned him on the cross. And look at the cross itself. The cross itself was such humiliation, right? People spitting on him, cursing him. He, it was a, it's such humiliation and condemnation. He carried the burden of sin of the world. And then he was, he was nailed, right? He was nailed and then bloodied. He walked. But the Lord, the Lord never lost this self-awareness, right? That you know, he is the son of God. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah or Savior. And that's the same thing we need to remember too. You know, with, amidst any kind of difficulties, any kinds of paths that we walk, we must never forget this. So today uh, we learned about the faith of Abraham, really receiving, uh, receiving this dream. What, what really are we holding on to? You know, is there something I'm holding on to? My past ideology, you know, you know, we're very stubborn in our ways, in how we are. Like, oh, my life should be like this way. And I put blinders on in my life that it should be like this way. But there's something like Abraham, I need to let go, right? I need to just let go of that. And God, God really blesses the one with a, a bigger heart. In, 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 in receiving a dream beyond my original life destiny. What is God calling me for? Is it really what I think it is? I wish we can have the faith to go beyond those limits. Right? Go beyond the limits of what I think it is. And have faith. Have faith to go beyond those limits. In this way, Abraham remained in history as such a great person of faith as the source of blessing. Let us all the one, be the ones to receive this great blessing as well, too. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we truly thank you so much for your grace in our life, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we learn about this first uh, way of Abraham, uh, this uh, Abraham's blessing that you really gave him, Lord. Uh, we also, too, Lord, wish to uh, receive this great blessing in our life, too. We come to see Abraham, who came from a bad background, uh, and, and, and that background seemingly could have hindered him in faith, Lord. And Lord, it's the same for us. Uh, where we come from, who we are, uh, our background, our ideology, the, the place where we should be in the future, Lord, uh, we tend to have blinders on and we tend to uh, just sit comfortably in, in our ways, Lord. But Lord, we come to see that your blessing comes from the one who has a bigger and open heart beyond those boundaries that we set for ourselves in the world, Lord. And Lord, we wish to be the ones uh, that have that open heart and receive that vertical power from above. Uh, your power, Lord, that you give us to uh, receive this amazing blessing and this promise, to be a great nation, to be an ancestor of faith, uh, to be the to, to go to the place of glorification that you wish for us, Lord. We know, Lord, you have a place of glory for us, uniquely for us, Lord. And we wish to let go of all the things that were hindering us, Lord. And at this place today, now, open up our hearts to really um, begin a, a new path, a path of your uh, amazing grace and blessing. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace in our life and just be with us and everything. Uh, we thank you. Please be with all of us during this retreat. Uh, all the, the members uh, really uh, gathered for this retreat and um, just pour down your, your abundant grace upon this retreat. Um, the, the message that we really need in our life, really please help us. And in Jesus Christ's name I prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.